Mm-hmm. Welcome to this week of Missouri Politics. We are here at the Mothership in our St. Louis studios, joined by the senator from San, the city of St. Louis, uh, Senator Carla May. Thank you for joining us again. Absolutely, St. Louis City and St. Louis County. Now my district split. You've grown. Yes. You've expanded. Yes. <laughs> You're all better together, some would say, me, right? Uh, We're gonna leave that topic. All right, this one. Now let's. <laughs> Let's talk about the big news of the week. Uh, you know, this is this is this week in Missouri politics, but I think this national politics affects Missouri. Absolutely. Donald Trump got arrested for like that fourth time. All right, let me just give you my simple hillbilly take on this. It is a bad look for a country, for one party to take power and imprison the leader of the party that was in power previously. Now, I think Donald Trump probably acted like a jackass, if I had to guess. He probably did stuff he shouldn't have done. You probably could have found a way not to charge him with a crime. Could you not have? Well, and then let's just say this. We got to think about, for instance, because when people are listening to us, they say if it was if it was if, if it were them. Yes. They don't get any special treatment. And so if we go with the motto, everybody is supposed to be equal under the law, then that brings about another conversation. Now, let me say about the, the, what your perspective. We are a country and we are the leader of the free world. And there are optics. Mm -hmm. But sometimes individuals need to kind of quiet down so that we can find (laughs) alternative solutions to certain things that makes that won't make us be embarrassed around the world. Somewhere in your mind, are you thinking of one possible former leader that's never been quiet, probably ever? Ever. So, but we need, well, you know, but sometimes, too. listen, sometimes if you know that you're th- the only theory that's working for him, I guess, is mobilizing a certain segment of the country. And he wants to keep mobilizing that segment at, at his own detriment. You're talking about your angry right wing suburban person who wanted Hillary Clinton put in prison. And I remember Donald Trump. I was at a rally in uh, observing it at uh, down at downtown at the Opera House at the keel and he said lock her up and they all chanted for that and the one thing i thought i doubt it was trump it would be out of character but someone in his administration said you know what we're not charging hillary clinton and they probably could have charged her. i think the federal government could charge you for anything they want at any time but they didn't do that and i thought that was a rare moment of judgment and grace and class by a man not known for that well do we know if they had enough to charge him and at the same time, how would that look with the country? Yeah. So it's going to be a it's going to be a balance of justice here. And when we're treading this line, we have to be very careful because we have individuals who have elected us to office who is who are holding us accountable at a certain level. And when we start to bend the law for and do special treatments for certain people in power, then individuals will have no faith in our system of justice or our system of law. So we have to find some way to thread the needle. Sure. Let's talk about a way. um, There was a long time threading of the needle with conservation in the legislature. Conservation would frequently uh, bring their proposals to do things. The legislature would, it was always like a a, a standoff, right? The legislature would push the conservation to do things Conservatives would push back and say, no, 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 you're going too far. Well, conservation decided to break the seal. They went to court, and the Supreme Court ruled that, essentially, with the dedicated tax that everybody pays every time they buy something that's the sale, under sales tax, that now they can spend that money like they want. Mm-hmm. Now, it's got to be, I think you've been on the defending end of that department, but you're also a member of the Missouri State Senate. How did you how'd you take the ruling of it? Essentially, they've been set free. Well, sometimes people need to be set free. Sometimes we got to trust the leadership of some experts and people that have spent time in the field doing the job. And sometimes when you have a little bit of power Mm -hmm. and you want something specific in your area or your district, you exert that power in a way that may not be optimal. For I, all. I think there's a so, senator from Springfield that would say there's probably some money in a certain district in the city of St. Louis because a certain senator exerted some of that influence, right? Well, <laughs> well, we ask. Yes. You know, I don't, I never, you know, I ain't going to say that, but you know, you, you never, <laughs> I would never push a leader to the point that says, you know, that where it's, 
you know, where they're telling me that this is they can't do this because there's some legal or some environmental issue or something. The reason why they shouldn't do it. So if that's the case, then we have to go with that case in lacks of other evidence. Now, if you want to micromanage and you want to be real big government, then you want to put everybody in their place and you want to control every department to the detriment. We have to let some of these departments have independence and conservation is probably one of them. So uh, it, I love when you filibuster. You remind me of my mama. When she's on a roll, she'll start quoting scripture. You quote a scripture more than once as to who much is given, much is required. <laughs> Yes. Conservation has been given a lot more power this week. Yeah. I think it's going to be very interesting. Oftentimes, bureaucracies, when they have, when, when they lose a check, and it wasn't an official check, but it definitely was a check of the legislature. Mm -hmm. When they lose that check, they can become a little arrogant. They can mm -hmm. become a little forceful. Yeah. I almost think, now that more has been given to them, I think it's almost going to be required of them to use, to have a gentle touch. Yeah. And use that power. A discretion. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Operate in discretion. But still, each one of these state departments still have to be accountable to Missourians. And so even though it is one of the 16 state departments, am I right? We have 16, I do believe, I'm gonna trust state you. departments. And all of those departments are in operation to protect Missourians or protect the interests of Missourians. So if we get people in office or in power or in position that that don't see that as their number one uh, reason why they're there, then they don't need to be there and they need to have discretion. And Missourians always need the ability to rein people in because we are the people. The power goes to the people, not to the individuals they elected. We're servant leaders of the people that has that have put us in office. And so that's what we have to be mindful of when all of these decisions come out. And we have a lot of people when they leave office, they take positions in the different departments or the various departments. We have to remember that everybody is looking for this, you know, woohoo, this power. We need to calm down with the power struggle and figure out how we can be more servant leaders. Let's talk about politics. Oh, politics. Woo. U.S. Senate race. <laughs> Josh Hawley running. Uh, he has a unique way. I, I think he's a very bright guy. I think he means to fire up folks in your district mm -hmm. to not like him, frankly. Mm -hmm. Running Lucas Kuntz, guy shot out of a cannon, raised a lot of money. He's ran ran once before. Mm -hmm. uh, then Wesley Bell jumps in. Mm -hmm. Wesley Bell, very talented politician, uh, the uh, the prosecuting attorney, essentially, for St. Louis County, the biggest county in the state. Uh, knocked off a longtime incumbent mm -hmm. uh, when he ran in what I think was an upset, especially when the race began. Uh, where do you think the race is right now? Well, I'm not sure. But, you know, I think people need to be very, you know, um, because filing doesn't open up until February of next year. So you never know who else will be Lucas joining. Lucas Cleese learned that last time, right? Yeah. At the very end. <laughs> That's right. So you never know who else may be joining the race. So I would be ca calm and cautious and wait and see. And, you know, when you think about people and how they've arrived at their positions, you know, it was an upset. But we also got to remember Ferguson mm -hmm. and the rise that calls nationwide. And that propelled sometimes circumstances and um, things that happen in the community propel you into certain positions. You follow me? Mm -hmm. But in the absence of those um, individual circumstances, will it be the same? Could be interesting. Tell me, just, me? just sitting here visiting this morning, can a Democrat beat Josh Hawley for the U.S. Senate seat? Absolutely. What about the governor's race? You got some folks you know pretty well running for governor. I do. Uh, and you've got a, a colleague of yours thinking about the race in Crystal Quaid. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just ask you the question. Who's going to win that Republican primary? Well, do you think it's the Republican primary? Oh, my God. That's going to be interesting because so you we were have expecting two... that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so let's think about that. So we have um, Mike Kehoe. Roots in your district? Yes. And we have, he grew up in the urban area. He did. You know, but, you know, he's a farmer now, cattleman. You got cows now. We yeah. claim him. <laughs> You're going to claim him. And then we have um, the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. you know, Ashcroft. So that's going to be an interesting race. If you know how to win races, who's going to win it? Mm -hmm. Bill Igle, your colleagues mm -hmm. are on, who's going to win? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. He, now that, 
you know, I love Bill, but I don't think Bill is going to place in that race. Like I told my uh, former colleague, former president pro Tim, I said, why are you getting in this race? I told him you're not going to place in this race. And he did. I gave good advice as well. I didn't believe me. So uh, I don't think I don't. I mean, I love Bill, but I don't think he's going to place in this race. You just told me filing didn't close for a while. Crystal Quaid's talked about running. Yes. Can she win? Now, that will create another dynamic because I think women are on the rise and I think women like women leadership. Look at the look at the Missouri State Senate. It seems Absolutely. like it's been a good thing. It has been a good thing. And so that is a, um, you know, a narrative that people are not expecting. So I think it's going to, I think it's going to be interesting. And I think Crystal Quaid has the ability to to win that. She's a special talent. Play it right. I need she need me as her campaign manager. I think that might be right. <laughs> Let's talk about some legislation that um, some that maybe didn't go uh, that you worked hard on. So obviously there's a uh, crime issue in the city of St. Louis. I don't yeah. think anybody would deny that. Uh, someone that uh, that you know well, Kim Gardner, mm-hmm. was prosecutor, essentially ran on a, a platform of trying to change the office, and did, and um, it, she resigned. It felt like there was a, there was a major push for the state to retake over the police department of the city of St. Louis. I'm not sure you weren't the one person standing in, in between that. I was. It felt like when Kim Gardner resigned, mm-hmm. your burden was a little easier to carry. Well, let me tell you this. People that were asking for Kim Gardner's resignation in the legislature should have tendered their own resignations. Because if you want to talk about crime in the urban er- area ever ever since I was elected to office, we have argued that the legislation that they were passing to lax gun laws in the state of Missouri would be detrimental to urban living. We live very close together. So it's not it's not the same as walking up and down a road in the country with an AR-15 as walking down an urban busy street with an AR-15. So when you when I was in the legislature, first you remove the conceal and carry permit. So that means now we got people with weapons that I, that are not trained to use them. You get me? As we get short on time, yeah. I'm just asking this question. As long as you're in the Missouri Senate, is there a way that you could ever find a way to let the state take over the police department again? Absolutely not. No. Why more. would I do that? Rapid fire question. Um, the Senate felt like it was getting back to normal this year. Definitely more of a normal, more more enjoyment on the floor. Um, the end, well. Reminded you of some old times. We'll see what happens next year. Uh, the the uh, current uh, Senate Minority Leader, John Rizzo, is leaving Stern Limited. Yes. Is that a job you're interested in? You know, I never take things off the table. Absolutely, I'm interested. But, you know, I have to weigh the options at that time and see who else is, you know, elected and who else is on the floor and who else is interested in the job. Well, Senator Carla May, I hope you come back as you as you make this decision to talk about it on this week in Missouri politics. I will do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll be right back with our Opinion Maker panel. Jack Coder joins us, the sharp-dressed man, after this. For more than a century, the St. Louis Carpenters Union has shaped our communities. Through trusted alliances, we deliver skilled professional craftspeople, while our business partners provide the kind of quality jobs that keep our economy humming. It's a blueprint that has worked since 1882. Turning Missouri into a right-to-work state stalls progress, wipes out jobs, and kills momentum. Right to work is wrong for everyone. Let's keep Missouri moving forward. Visit carpdc.org to learn more. All throughout Missouri, businesses are struggling to find workers. Child care challenges are a big reason why. Our kids are losing out too. Through high impact early childhood investments, we can support the workforce of today and better prepare our workforce of tomorrow. Empower families with the resources they need to succeed. Reduce crime and avoid costly interventions, saving taxpayers money. Together, we can make Missouri the best place to work, raise a family, and be a kid. Data captured by our state-of-the-art monitors helps us pinpoint the timing and location of severe weather more accurately and respond to trouble more quickly. Ameren Missouri's investment in smart technologies like this is one way we're improving reliability and restoring power faster than ever. Responding to trouble before trouble hits. That's energy at work. Ameren, Missouri. 
Welcome back to this week of Missouri Politics Opinion Maker Panel Time with the most quotable man of the Missouri Republican Party, Jim Murphy. Welcome back to the show. Well, thanks for having me. The Dean of the Missouri Republican Party, David Barclay. Welcome back. I'm still live. David Cook, love the UFCW 655. Welcome back. Great to be here. And Jack Coder, thank you so much for making the time. Hey, great to see you, Scott. All right, as the resident lawyer on the panel here, oh boy. Uh, Donald Trump gets arrested. Yeah. All right. It's a terrible look. Is Was there a way that they could have sent around a boardroom somewhere and said, you know what, we don't want to arrest the leader of the opposition political party? I think that ship sailed. I think Donald Trump had ample opportunities to not get indicted. If he would have done it, he would have given him back. If he would have given the documents he back, if he did, he would have given the documents back, he would not be in this predicament. Um, but the fact that he lied, he obstructed, that's where he's in big trouble. This case is not going to center on him having the classified documents. It's going to center on him not giving them back and lying to the federal government. They don't like it when you do that. People go to prison for obstructing justice all the time, and I think Donald Trump's going to join many of those folks. Right. Dave Cook, I uh, love you because you can talk hogs, dogs, and logs with anybody in this state. You had, let's say you got an employee down at Kroger in Butler yeah. County, Missouri, and he thinks, now wait a minute, they didn't charge Hillary, and now they're trying to put Trump in jail. Tell me what to say to that guy. This was a self-inflicted wound. There is no reason for this to happen other than Donald Trump chose to have the circus continue. This is a choice of his. He wants the limelight, he wants the spotlight, and he wants the entire country talking about him, irregardless of his good, bad, or indifferent. He believes that if the cameras are on him, he's winning the debate. So this was a self-inflicted decision. All right, Jim Murphy, let's say we're down at uh, Joe Patterson's bar down on in Oakville on Telegraph Road. Is there anybody at that bar that thinks this wasn't Joe Biden being vindictive to Donald Trump? Well, first of all, the narrative is Trump lied, Trump did this, Trump did that. None of that's proven. That's just the narrative that's out there, pushed by a Democrat, pushed by the media. We don't know that to be true. Let the judge figure that out before we start making those accusations. Hey, Biden, $5 million. Come on. It's an accusation. It isn't proved yet. I'm not going to sit here and say it's true. You shouldn't be saying it's true either. David Barclay, it was a terrible look. This New York thing looks, I don't care. You could be the most liberal Donald Trump hater. You could be Rosie O'Donnell herself, right? And you would think what they did in New York was squirrely. This looks obviously more like he probably technically broke the law, but it's a terrible look. Like, I, I do think that the argument we need to be considering is what does this do to democracy? What does it do to the integrity of the system? I'm reminded of Newton's third law, that for every action there is an opposite and equal reaction. Clearly, Donald Trump had disdain, disrespect uh, openly for the prosecutors, for the FBI, for everybody who was involved in this. And of course, they then, you know, in return, acted in such a way that I think created an overreaction. And why I say that is this, is that it's not that a president is above the law, but clearly because the president is a representative of democracy to the world, to the country, the filters that we've seen, some of the unfortunate incidents that the FBI was called out over the Russian investigation, it turns out that some of that may be true, that it was overinflating. It sets a tone going into this election that it looks... And it gives Donald Trump the ability to use that platform that it's political prosecution or persecution. I don't think it is. I think he probably broke the law. But I would say that that standard previously to other presidents, they've looked the other way in the interest of democracy. And I know that's not a popular thing to say that a president should be above the law, but they have been for years. John Kennedy dated a Russian spy. I mean, all the way through, there are little things that president we've looked the other way in the interest of democracy. But that time is over. I think it puts a whole lot of things at risk. Any, is there anybody in Gordonville, in Tom Schulte's neighborhood, that believes this is on the up and up? No, and that's that's right. the litmus test. That's yeah. that's where I think you're going is that we have to guard that. And again, I'm not a, a I, I I think Donald Trump violated the the letter of the law, but the prosecutors I think violated uh, good judgment in moving forward. They could have just gone down, taken it, and yeah. been done with. Prediction that did he break the law? I believe so, but it needs to be proven. Did he break the law? I, yes, I believe he did. And did he break I, the law? Let's find out. I think you broke the law. I think you can break five federal laws before break was they won't put you in jail. You go to jail. But right. will he go to jail? No. Will he go to jail? No. 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 I probably don't think he will even go to jail. I think this will end with him maybe finally exiting stage left quietly and getting out of this race. Hmm. Let's talk about uh, uh, some folks that are exiting stage left as far as helping the Conservation Department spend their money. <laughs> uh, the Supreme Court basically ruled that for a long time, Jim, there's been this standoff. The legislature has some check over the Department of Conservation. It's not exactly they have their own money, and they'll tell you, and they'll push back on you from getting too far involved, and you'll want to get involved. And there was this stance I thought worked out generally pretty well. Conservation Board goes to court, and now they're pretty much free of you guys. 
Well, it, they've always been kind of free. Yes. You know, we've been fighting for feral hogs <laughs> for, <laughs> since I've been there and since before Robert that, Ross, and we yeah. will be doing it forever. So, so they've always had their free will, but you know, there's there's always a check. You know, they they still report to the governor. They still uh, we have to. Uh, uh, you know, the the Senate at least confirms all of their uh, uh, their uh, top people. So there, there'll always be a check. And whether or not we need to be involved in the day to day in conservation, probably not. Going to be interesting, though. Uh, any bureaucracy, don't care who's the governor, what state it is, what if it's a city. When they have that autonomy, there is a natural instinct to kind of become heavy handed. Right. I think it's going to be very interesting to watch conservation who some folks have made those allegations when Jim could still be in their business, Yeah, how they handle that power. That's going to be a very interesting thing to tell the maturity of that department. Can they handle this? Well, and it's broad power. And in my understanding, in this dispute, it involves, you know, this purchase of land, right? So yeah. conservation is the ability uh, enumerated in the Constitution to purchase land with the funds that they're given through their direct tax. I don't know what the backstory is in St. Clair County that led to the legislature trying to strip some of that from their from the budget years ago. I'd be curious to hear that someday. But the Supreme Court was very clear that basically, for, at least from the appropriations process, the legislature needs to stay out of conservation's business. But to Representative Murphy's point, the legislature still does have some control over conservation because the Senate does confirm the commissioners to the Conservation but, Committee. But, you know, this this dissolution of power, I, I have to say this. You look at St. Louis County in this region. Uh, St. Louis governance was set up with with everything from uh, uh, by state, the library, uh, parks, all these things are independent. It creates a management nightmare because you have fiefdoms over time as they mature. They become independent. They're mm -hmm. not really focused. You can't bring resources together, get stuff done. And, and the worry is, and, and everybody suspected that conservation gets fat. When other people, you know, are are barely able to survive, and that's one of the inconsistencies of governing like this. I believe in the best interest of democracy and the taxpayers is to have a strong legislature that's accountable, but to watch them, to challenge them, to be able to beat them. But when you have all these little fiefdoms, it's almost impossible to get good information in governance and right. management. Well, it's not a matter of the law was bad. But I think the precedent. Yeah, and, and, and it's really difficult for average citizens to understand when yeah. you have these bureaucratic layers. But to that point, then what, what folks need to do is there needs to be a constitutional amendment. If people think this is an overreach, we got to go change the Constitution and limit the Constitution. I'm trying to figure out the difference between DNR and conservation, who does what. Right. Average taxpayer, it's tough. Yeah. You know, there was a constitutional amendment passed that allowed people to sell marijuana here in the state. <laughs> and now the people selling that are becoming members of UFCW, right? They are. Yeah, it's, it is a growing industry, and there's no pun intended there, okay? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. there's... Hey, I went to Dr. Havis for the first time, and I slept like a baby. Yeah, yeah don't blow smoke at us, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let's be serious. This is a this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Okay. It's going to continue to be a multi-billion dollar industry. What what we're seeing is that we want to make sure that these workers that are a skilled trade, uh, they, they know about every one of those little gummies they sell you and what it does, what effect it has on you. Um, that those people are rewarded and have a part of that pie, a part of that billion dollar revenue source. We have them coming to UFCW across the state, not only my local, the local on the other side of the state at record numbers. Uh, we're filing petitions on a, on a regular basis. Our phones are ringing off the hook and we're looking forward to growing that industry, pun intended. Everybody let's talk U.S. Senate race. End of the day, can anybody beat Josh Hawley on the Democrat side? No. Jim Murphy? No. But Wesley Bell's running. Uh, prosecutor, talented guy. Uh, Lucas Coates has been a, been a talented politician, head of steam. Seems like every time he gets ahead of steam, a Democrat that um, isn't a straight, white, Christian male jumps in the race and he kind of gets knocked back down. Wesley Bell is a very, very smart politician. Yes. Uh, when he first came into office, I had some problems with him. I, I called him. We, we met. First thing he did is said, let's have a town hall. He came down. We've done two town halls together. And people in my area that thought he was kind of a crazy wacko when he was elected, now actually, everybody in South County yeah. now actually yeah. actually think he's a pretty darn good uh, prosecutor. So, he, you know, he won a lot of people over. Now, I don't think they'll, they'll vote for him, you know, for, against Holly, sure. but but he's a, he's a good politician. So, well, I you know, uh, by the way, Wesley Bell, if you're watching on ABC 30, will be on with Justice and Journalism with Mike Carter later this morning. Uh, what'd you think? I mean, I know that uh, the NFL came out the day before Wesley Bell jumped in the race. Uh, Dave Cook, just tell me. I mean, here, this is just my, you're a highly astute 
labor leader. I'm a simple hillbilly. Mm-hmm. In Democrat primaries, being a white, heterosexual, mm-hmm. Christian male is tough. I think that's correct. And I'll also tell you that, that Wesley Bell, Bell, I consider a friend, um, I think is extremely talented. I think he has a career serving the public. Uh, I don't think this is it. And I, I actually think that with uh, Mr. Koontz wrapping up the labor endorsement, I think that helps take away that surprise candidate coming in and swooping that away from them in the primary. Jack Gordon, what do you think? I mean, I, it's, I think it's a tough move historically for Koontz to win a statewide primary if Wesley, if it's a two-person race. Well, and, and Wesley does have a proven track record, yeah. so I wouldn't count the guy out. I think his rollout has been, um, I mean, it hasn't been great. I mean, he rolls out this campaign. He doesn't have his FEC committee set up. He doesn't have a campaign spokesperson. He's being asked for comment, and no one can be bothered to comment. So I don't think it's a great rollout, but this is very early in the process. Wesley Bell has surprised everyone before when he knocked off a longtime yep. incumbent, and so I wouldn't count the guy out in this race. And he has a proven track record he can run on. As Jim said, a good prosecutor. He's done a good job. Um, and, and he's got that record. I don't know what Lucas Kuntz's record. I mean, he has obviously a, a military record. But in terms of actually helping the people of Missouri, I'm not sure what his record is. Give me a prediction here. Who wins that Democrat primary? I think Wesley. Who wins? Bell. Kuntz wins it. <laughs> I think probably Wesley will. Seems like. You had to say that. Yeah. <laughs> first, first of all, I was one of the first labor leaders in the state to endorse him. Well, that, that's, right. that's ballsy. That's good. And, and I think that Lucas is the right candidate at the right time. For the general, I want to be clear. I think it's probably right, too. I, I think if there's going to be a chance to take out uh, Holly, it's not going to be Wesley. It's going to be Kuntz. We're going to get taken off there. It's Jack Order. Who won the week? I think Gabe Gore, our new uh, circuit attorney, won the it's week. It's going well. It, it, it's, it's going much better. Again, you can't fall off the ground, but he's done a great job. This week, he hired five very experienced prosecutors, a couple of whom I worked with uh, when I was in that office many years ago. Um, he's bringing trust and integrity back to that operation. Um, and I think in a few months, you're going to start to see the difference on the ground. One week. One week. Shagra workers in, from the dispensary in Columbia who won the union election, even though a lot of them got fired by their employer, they still voted for the union. Nice. One week. Yeah. Well, I was going to say Gabe Gore, but I, I could have said Jack Coder because Jack, if he were in that position, would be doing an amazing job. But with that being yeah. said, I think the region also won yeah. because the region came together. You saw the speaker, the pro tem come out. You saw all six prosecutors come in to to try to push and take a role in it. And to that regard, I think we saw how the region can work. One week, Tony Lovasco. He took on the the, uh, the right wing uh, wackos that want to. Uh, Place the blame and, and or fix the blame and never fix the problem. And uh, I think he uh, stood up to guess. I'm going to say the, uh, the junior senator from the great state of Missouri, Eric Schmidt, three run triple in the congressional <laughs> baseball game. Couldn't have went better. Uh, if you're sticking around here at ABC, tech, Justin Journalism with Judge Mike Carr is going to have Wesley Bell on his show coming up later this morning. We'll see you back next week for this week of Missouri politics. This Week in Missouri Politics is sponsored by the Missouri Automobile Dealers Association, Ameren, Spire, and the United Electric Cooperative.